Stoichiometry. A second example of a stoichiometry question, this time with gases. In a container with a fixed volume of 25 liters at a temperature of 233 degrees Celsius, we have some N2 with a partial pressure of 18 atmospheres and some O2 with a partial pressure of 12 atmospheres. The N2 and O2 react together to produce N2O. The temperature stays constant. A. What mass of N2O is produced? B. What is the final pressure? Because we're being asked to find the amount of a compound we produce in a reaction, this is definitely a stoichiometry question. Let's start by writing the reaction. We notice that the oxygens are not balanced, so we add a 2 in front of the N2O. We also need to add a 2 in front of the nitrogen. Now our equation is balanced. To calculate the mass of N2O, we need to determine how much we could potentially produce with each of our reactants. We need to find which one is our limiting reagent. Normally in stoichiometry questions, we divide the mass of the reactants by their molar masses to determine how many moles we have of each. Here, we will use their partial pressures to determine the number of moles present. Let's rearrange the equation to solve for moles. Starting with nitrogen, we insert the pressure, volume, universal gas constant, and the temperature in kelvins. The same must be done with the given partial pressure of the oxygen. Next, we need to multiply the numbers of moles by the stoichiometric coefficients to find how many moles of N2O could be produced. Looking at the balanced equation, we see that two moles of N2 produce two moles of N2O, so they are stoichiometrically equivalent. One mole of O2 produces two moles of N2O, so it can produce two times more moles than the nitrogen. So, even though we had fewer moles of oxygen as reactants, because of the stoichiometric ratios, it's actually the nitrogen that's our limiting reagent. We only have enough nitrogen to produce 10.834 moles of N2O, and the oxygen is in excess. Now that we know how many moles of N2O can be produced, we just need to multiply these numbers by the molar mass to see what this represents in grams. The molar mass will be calculated directly in the equation. The answer is rounded to three significant digits because all the data given in the question also had three significant digits. For part B of this question, we'll move these numbers to the side to make room for the other calculations. After the reaction, the total pressure will be the sum of the N2O that gets produced, and also the excess oxygen that did not react. There is no more nitrogen because as the limiting reagent, it was completely used up. We know how many moles of N2O were produced, but we need to calculate the number of moles of oxygen left over. To do this, we need to find how much oxygen was consumed in the reaction. We must look again at the stoichiometric ratio. We subtract the consumed amount of moles of oxygen from the total number of moles of oxygen. We find that we have 1.8059 moles of oxygen in excess. These moles will contribute to the final pressure. So, the total quantity of moles that will exert a force on the walls of the container will be the 10.834 moles of N2O produced, plus the 1.8059 moles of oxygen in excess. In total, that gives 12.6399 moles of gas in the container after the reaction. Now all that's left to calculate is the final pressure using the ideal gas equation with the mole value we just calculated. In some questions, the temperature changes at the end of the reaction, so make sure you insert the right data in those cases. The answer is rounded to three significant digits. The final pressure is 21.0 atmospheres. Fun fact, the N2O produced in this reaction is actually the laughing gas used for anesthetics in surgeries.